Namaskar and welcome to Vision of Asia, Voice of the Community. I'm Kala Shankar. Let us begin today, March 1st program with the headlines. We have glimpses of President Trump's visit to India, the event with Deepak Chopra by Akshaya Patra, Shivratri celebrations, the annual Sikh Heritage Night in New Jersey, the coronavirus in New York City's Chinese community, and this week with Padma Shri Dr. Sudhir Parikh. All this coming up right after these messages. It was a historic visit by the President of the United States of America to India. President Donald Trump traveled 8,000 miles with the First Lady and his high-level delegates for two days, February 24th and 25th. There was plenty of excitement in welcoming the President at Ahmedabad. The colorful and diverse culture of India was visible at the airport as well as on the streets of Ahmedabad. The first stop that the President and First Lady made was at Mahatma Gandhi's Sabarmati Ashram. Addressing over 100,000 people at Motera Stadium in Ahmedabad, President Trump showered praise on India and Indian leader Prime Minister Narendra Modi. He also visited the Taj Mahal and three important agreements were signed between the two nations. Here are a few glimpses of that visit. Come on, first of all, let's go to Ahmedabad in the same way. When American President Donald J. Trump went to the Hawaii and he was there to go to the the protocol of the protocol of the President of Narendra Modi. विश्व के इन दोनों दिग्गज नेताओं ने न केवल गले मिलकर एक दूसरे का अभिनंदन किया और हाथ मिलाया बल्कि साथ ही एयरपोर्ट पर भारत की सांस्कृतिक रंगारंग झांकियां भी अमेरिका के राष्ट्रपति का गर्म जोशी से स्वागत कर रही थी आइए चलें उन क्षणों की ओर भारत अमेरिका के राष्ट्रपति के स्वागत में एक उत्सवमय ढंग से सजा हुआ दिखाई दे रहा था अहमदाबाद की सड़कों पर जहां हजारों की संख्या में अलग-अलग मार्गों पर भारत के निवासी पूरे उत्साह से अमेरिका के राष्ट्रपति और उनके साथ आए हुए उनके परिवार के और अमेरिका के उच्च अधिकारियों के दल का स्वागत करने के लिए प्रस्तुत थे वहीं यह भी देखने में आया कि पूरे उत्साह से भारत और अमेरिका के संबंधों को प्रगाढ़ करने की दिशा में सक्रिय रहे आईटीवी गोल के चेयरमैन पद्मश्री डॉक्टर सुधीर पारिख ने भी भारत में नमस्ते ट्रंप के आयोजन की ओर अपनी तरफ से अभिनंदन किया इस तरह के भी कुछ बैनर्स अहमदाबाद की सड़कों पर दिखाई दिए आपको याद होगा कि पद्मश्री डॉक्टर सुधीर पारिख सक्रिय रहे हैं उस दिशा में जब इंडिया कॉकस की स्थापना हुई साथ ही साथ उन्होंने इंडो न्यूक्लियर ट्रीटी की दिशा में सक्रिय रहे भारतीय समुदाय के लोगों के साथ भी कंधे से कंधा मिलाकर कार्य किया था जैसा कि आप जानते जानते हैं अहमदाबाद में साबरमती आश्रम न केवल महात्मा गांधी के जीवन की झांकियों को चित्त प्रदर्शनी के द्वारा आगंतुकों तक पहुंचाता है बल्कि साथ में वहां यह भी एक सुविधा है कि आप किस तरह से महात्मा गांधी चरखा काटते रहे होंगे उसका अनुभव भी आप कर सकते हैं और यह अनुभव अमेरिका के राष्ट्रपति ने भी मेलानिया ट्रंप की और भारत के प्रधानमंत्री नरेंद्र मोदी जी की उपस्थिति में प्राप्त किया साथ ही साथ प्रधानमंत्री मोदी जी ने उन्हें बताया कि क्या सांकेतिक अर्थ है उन तीन बंदरों का जो गांधी जी के trying to absorb the essence of Mahatma Gandhi, his teachings, and his philosophy. It's hard to imagine, but this is exactly how the Mahatma would have sat here. Sadar Patel Stadium is closed now, but its charm, its bhavyata, और उसकी छटा देखते ही बनती है विशेष करके जब खचाखच भरा हुआ स्टेडियम भारत के 
प्रधानमंत्री और अमेरिका के राष्ट्रपति को एक साथ स्वागत करने के लिए तैयार था तो वहाँ की ऊर्जा बिल्कुल विशेष रूप से उत्साह बढ़ाने वाली थी बाय अलाउ चेयर एंड प्रेसिडेंट डोनाल्ड ट्रंप शेकिंग हैंड्स वॉम हाथ सिंबलाइजिंग द ग्रेट इंडो अमेरिकन फ्रेंडशिप The aim is to strengthen and deepen the ties further. एक ऐतिहासिक घटना आपका स्वागत करें. Let us welcome this moment of goodwill and kinship. भारत माता की. भारत माता की. भारत माता की. India USA friendship USA friendship India US friendship India US friendship Namaste Aaj Motera Stadium mein ek naya itihas ban raha hai इंडिया यूएसए रिलेशंस आर नो लॉन्गर जस्ट अनदर पार्टनरशिप इट इज ये फार ग्रेटर एंड क्लोजर रिलेशनशिप इस अवसर पर भारत के प्रधानमंत्री ने यह भी स्पष्ट किया कि नमस्ते इस शब्द का क्या मूल है इस शब्द का क्या अर्थ है इस कार्यक्रम का इस कार्यक्रम का जो नाम है नमस्ते उसका मतलब भी बहुत गहरा है ये दुनिया की प्राचीनतम भाषाओं में से एक संस्कृत का शब्द है इसका भाव है कि सिर्फ व्यक्ति को ही नहीं उसके भीतर व्याप्त डिविनिटी को भी हम नमन करते हैं अब बारी है उन झलकियों की जब अमेरिका के राष्ट्रपति डोनाल्ड जी ट्रंप ने उत्साह से भरे हुए भारत के नर नारियों को सरदार पटेल स्टेडियम अहमदाबाद में संबोधित किया नमस्ते नमस्ते एंड हेलो टू इंडिया This is such a great honor. Let me begin by expressing my profound gratitude to an exceptional leader, a great champion of India, a man who works night and day for his country and a man I am proud to call my true friend Prime Minister Modi. And to the 125,000 people in this great stadium today, thank you for the spectacular welcome to your magnificent country. You have done a great honor to the American people, Milani and my family. We will always remember this remarkable hospitality. We will remember it forever. Quoting Dr. Deepak Chopra's statement, Anything that is of value in life only multiplies when it is given. The Akshay Patra organization, which works with the motto Food for Education, invited guests for an evening with Dr. Deepak Chopra recently at the Princeton Club of New York last Saturday. ITV Golden Park Worldwide Media's chairman, Dr. Sudhir Parikh, was also present to support the Akshay Patra Foundation. The foundation is the world's largest NGO-run midday meal program, serving a wholesome lunch to over 1.8 million children in 16,856 schools across 13 states in India every day. Here are some highlights of that evening. that only 5% of disease-related gene mutations are fully penetrated. 
which means if you have that particular mutation, the disease is guaranteed. Uh, some because of the Baraka gene for breast cancer, they'll get breast cancer. And for that, we have new technologies coming from Boston, CRISPR, and so on. But 95% of disease-related gene mutations are still actually not penetrable. They're influenced by lifestyle. So 95% of chronic illness is influenced by how we live our lives. And happiness is one component. Yes, I mean, we had a, such a great program, and uh, we had a great speaker, uh, uh, Des Pandey as well, Mr. Des Pandey, as well as uh, Deepak Chopra. And uh, Deepak Chopra said, uh, a good friend of ours uh, uh, for a long time, and uh, Deepak Chopra said the very right thing, that only happiness you get when you help some, someone else. And I think that's an absolute uh, great uh, tagline which um, uh, I'm following it, and my old friends, Dr. Kulkarni and Mrs. Kulkarni, both are following it, and everyone else should follow it. Thank you. Takshay Patra is doing a great job to feed the uh, school children, and uh, uh, they, they do all the fundraising uh, all over the um, uh, United States. Uh, in October, they have fundraising in uh, New Jersey. Uh, so they, they do amazing, amazing work for the children. So about 10 years ago, we were in a conference at, um, uh, in Vancouver with His Holiness uh, Dalai Lama, who, if you've seen him, even on videotapes or anywhere, he's the happy guy. <laughs> he's a very happy person. To all the scientists who were there, he said, uh, can you do some research on what makes people happy? And of course, the scientists, this is a mind brain conference, they came back two years later with something that they call the happiness formula. So let me share it with you, okay? The happiness formula is written in the following way H is equal to, H stands for happiness, is equal to S. S stands for something <coughs> called set point in the brain, and I'll explain what that is in a moment. The set point in the brain determines. 50% of your happiness experience every day. Every day. H is equal to S plus C. C is conditions of living, primarily financial conditions. And uh, we are delighted here to have this program uh, tonight at the Princeton Club in Manhattan. Uh, we have a lot of dignitaries here. We have Deepak Chopra ji. Uh, we have Desh Deshpande. We have Vandana Tilak. And we are really excited that all these uh, other guests uh, who are here are going to be able to participate and listen to uh, their presentations. Yep. It was wonderful that uh, Dr. Chopra said, and he spelled out the formula for happiness, and biggest happiness comes when you make someone else happy. And that is so true. And Akshay Patra can be a resource to make you happy uh, and contribute to people's happiness. Uh, the third part of the formula, H is equal to S plus C plus B, is the choices we make every day. Every day we make. So that's about 40%. 50%, 10%, 40%, roughly. So what's the set point? The set point is your attitude to life, basically. If um, you think that life is a problem, then you have a set point for unhappiness. If you think that life is an opportunity and that you exist for a reason, then you're a happy person. How is the set point determined? It's determined, unfortunately, for you by your parents. <laughs> so <laughs> if, if, if your parents were always complaining, condemning, playing the victim, criticizing, you hear that as a child, and you know, there's a phenomenon called mirror neurons. Your neurons mirror the neurons of your parents, and so you grow up to be an unhappy person. And um, it has nothing to do with you, because you were basically mimicking what you heard. On the other hand, if your parents were always looking for opportunities, excited about existence, and uh, always thought there was, in any adversity, there was a seed of a greater opportunity, then you grow up to be a happy person. Well, thank you very much. You know, it's, it's been a fantastic event at the Princeton Club. It's so nice to see so many people from New York and New Jersey come here together and, and really share their compassion and uh, 
true concern for the children in India where we can make sure that every child has an opportunity and is not deprived of education because of hunger. So we really appreciate the crowd here tonight and their compassion to help us. Thank you. Thank you very much. The last part of the formula, H is equal to S plus C plus B is the choices, voluntary choices. B stands for voluntary choices. So people make two kinds of choices. And one choice is for personal pleasure. The second choice that people make uh, is the one you're going to make tonight. It is the choice that brings you some meaning or purpose or some sense of fulfillment. So those choices include feeling <coughs> relevant, having a meaning and purpose in your existence, and also the ability to make other people happy. In fact, the fastest way to be happy is to make somebody else happy. You want to give yourself a dopamine hit, make somebody happy. Immediately then, you will feel better. एक मींस इतना अच्छा काम कर रहा है भारत में मैं पर्सनली तो मेरा प्रेफर्ड चैरिटी है नॉन प्रॉफिट है और सबसे बढ़िया बात अक्षय पात्र है कि एट वेरी लो एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव कॉस्ट बहुत ही ज़रूरतमंद लोगों को बच्चों को वो भोजन पहुंचाती है और दे हैव सर्ड वन बिलियन मील्स दे वांट द गांधी पीस प्राइज लास्ट ईयर और बहुत ही मतलब एक जो आइडियल होना चाहिए नॉन प्रॉफिट और फिलेंथ्रोपी का वो उस सीमा तक अक्षय पात्र पहुँचता है और सबसे खुशी की बात है कि हम लोग काफ़ी जुड़े हुए हैं अक्षय पात्र के साथ अक्षय पात्र की जो लीडरशिप है वंदना जी लॉस एंजलिस में और हमारे एरिया में डॉक्टर रचना कुलकर्णी एंड डॉक्टर आनंद कुलकर्णी उनका जो लीडरशिप है वो देखने में बहुत अच्छा लग रहा है कि उन लोगों ने इतना एक्टिवली काम किया है और भारत और यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स के बीच में जो सेतु है उसमें अक्षय पात्रा एक बहुत बड़ा योगदान करता है जस्ट अ ग्रेट प्रिवलेज टू बी पार्ट ऑफ दिस अमेजिंग एफर्ट इफ एवरीबडी फॉलोड वट अक्षय पात्रा इज डूइंग वी कुड हैव अ मोर पीसफुल जस्ट सस्टेनेबल हेल्थियर एंड जॉयफुल वर्ल्ड सो प्लीज डोनेट एंड गेट इन्वॉल्व अक्षय पात्रा Well, soft power is simply the software of your body. It's called the mind, and the mind functions through creativity, insight, love, compassion, joy, equanimity, vision, insight, intuition, imagination. So, soft power, soft power, what you call, is real power. My dear friends, make a difference in the world for your own happiness, for your own health, for your own. Uh, for your own future and of course for the future of india india has never invaded another country militarily india has colonized the world through its culture through its music through its poetry through its uh, <coughs> mythologies living mythologies through its uh, fashions and through its entertainment and there's no part in the world where you go and there aren't indians and the indian culture is not alive and so whatever it is that gave us this gift that we were born in that place that we call mother india it is our obligation and our duty you are watching vision of asia voice of the community this program brings events of our community to you every monday through thursday at 8 pm and our weekly special is shown every Sunday at 11 a.m. Thanks for your continued encouraging response to our programs. ITV Gold is striving to bring fresh ideas and entertainment under the leadership of our chairman, Padma Shri, Dr. Sudhir Park. We appreciate your valuable comments and suggestions. Vision of Asia continues right after these messages. Stay with us. Maha Shivratri was celebrated with devotion by Hindu devotees across the globe last Friday. Typically, devotees fast, meditate on Lord Shiva for eternal knowledge and chant Om Namah Shivaya. Lord Shiva is described as easy to please. He's known to be fond of Abhishek, which literally means the pouring of water, milk and other pious liquid on the Shiv linga. while accompanied with the chanting of the rudri path 
Eleven priests chanted the Rudri with devotion and created positive vibrations leading to pure joy at the Ganesh temple on Mahashivratri night. The joy of participating in these time-tested practices of pleasing Lord Shiva was felt by devotees throughout the tri-state area at various temples. In our special ITV Gold report on Shivratri, we take you to the Ganesh temple in Flushing, Shiv Shakti Peet at Hillside Avenue, and the Sai Mandir in Hicksville. Ashok Vyas has this report. Namaskar, I'm Ashok Vyas, and today, Mahashivratri Day, Day to celebrate the intensity of devotion for Lord Shiva. Nama Shiva Yom Nama Shiva. Which is happening at various places in New York, and we will take you to some of these places in this uh, Mahakal Report Express, so to say, uh, dedicated to Lord Shiva. Om Nama Shiva. Om Nama Shiva. Om Namah Shiva. We do all the Shivaratri puja here as per the uh, Veda Agama Shastra method. It's fully of Vedic rituals being conducted. Every day we do Rudra Abhisheka. And today being the Shivaratri day, we are doing Ekadashavara Rudra Abhisheka. Rudram, everyone knows, it is the very uh, center portion of the Ejuru Veda. Krishna Ejuru Veda. Uh, it is very in, in, in this uh, Rudra uh, only Lord Shiva name has been revealed several times. Uh, uh, we we chant eleven times. That's why it's called as Ekadasha Rudra Abhisheka. And we do Ekadasha Bhara Rudra Abhisheka, which means uh, for every Rudra we use uh, an ingredients uh, to do Abhishek to Lord Shiva. And uh, this is a four-hour long uh, thing that we have to chant. Uh, with 11 priests together chanting 11 times. And uh, every uh, Rudra Anuvaka we do an Abhisheka. And after this, there are four phases of uh, Abhishekam also done, which goes till the throat night. <laughs> One, what you get uh, on Shivaratri day is a very, very, very fresh cosmic energy which is good for all of us and uh, we can just feel uh, the real happiness, real consciousness. You know, you, you, we cannot just express by words. So, you can, you have to be here to feel and experience it. Wonderful. So I think um, uh, I agree with you on that. The sense of fulfillment and happiness is something to be realized, and that only happens when you expose yourself to such an environment. Hara hara Parvati Badaye, Bolo Sankara Bhagavan ki, Nandige Sri Maharaj ki, Parvati Maharaj ki. शंकर का एक तो प्राणों का प्राकट है आज जब वेद शुरू प्रकट किए तो भगवान ने पहले प्राणों को किया और दूसरा इसमें ब्रह्मा विष्णु का थोड़ा सा विवाद हुआ तो उसमें एक ज्योतिर्लिंग प्रकट हुआ तो वो ज्योतिर्लिंग प्रकट करने के साथ ही महाशिवरात्रि का पर्व मनाया जाता वैदिक काल से उसके बाद फिर इसके साथ जुड़े हुए भगवान शंकर का उमा पार्वती के साथ पानी ग्रहण है मतलब अनेक चीजें जुड़ती चलेगी हमारे हिंदू धर्म में ज्यादा करके बड़े बड़े मूर्तों में बढ़िया बढ़िया काम किया जाता है तो आज के दिन ऋषियों ने जब तब का शुरुआत किया ये भगवान शंकर का इस धूनी कहते हैं ऊपर आ जाए तो मौसम के चेंज के साथ साथ यज्ञों की शुरुआत की गई और स्कूलों में जो वेद पाठी ब्राह्मण है उन्होंने रुद्राभिषेकों की प्रथाएं प्रारंभ की शिवरात्रि से ही जिससे कि संसार में सब प्रकार से लोग सुखी रहे नागेंद्र हाराय त्रिलोचनाय भस्मांगरागाय महेश्वराय नित्याय शुद्धाय दिगंबराय तस्मे नकाराय नमः शिवाय 
और शिव तो कल्याणकारी यही सुबह से लेकर के रात के 12 बजे तक ये प्रोग्राम चलता रहेगा और इसमें अनेक प्रकार की विधियाँ होगी और फिर भस्मी अभिषेक होने के साथ इसकी पूर्ण आहुति की जाएगी ये शिव शक्ति पीठ का प्रोग्राम है आपका धन्यवाद अशोक जी कल्याण हो इन कर एक्चुअली भगवान शंकर को प्रणव माना गया है प्रणव माने कहता ओम और प्रणव का ही अर्थ उमा भी है उमा का जितने शब्द हैं उमा और ओम दोनों के जितने हम वर्ण करें तो एक जैसे ही है तो भगवान शंकर जब सृष्टि का प्रारंभ किए तो साथ ही साथ शक्ति का उदय करना पड़ा ताकि ये सृष्टि चलाने में ईजी हो एक ही चीज से चलती नहीं है तो शिव और शक्ति भगवान पुरुष और स्त्री साथ में जीव के भी यही स्थिति है सृष्टि को बढ़ाने के लिए तो शिव लिंग का जो पूजन है वो शिव शक्ति का ही प्रतीक है शिव तत्व क्या है समस्त अखिलांड कोटि ब्रह्मांडों का वो कल्याण कारक है इसका बोलते हैं शिवा शिवा बोल के समस्त लोकों का अनेक अखिलांड कोटि ब्रह्मांडों का कल्याण कारक शिव कहते हैं शिवजी आशुतोष बोलते हैं सुलभ प्रसन्न मूर्ति बोलते हैं आज शिव जी को एक वन स्पून वन उद्धरण वन स्पून ऑफ वाटर आफरिंग एंड वन बिल्व पत्र त्रिदल त्रिगुणाकार त्रिनेत्रिधम त्रिजन्म पाप संहार एक बिल्व शिवार्पण एक बिल्व पत्र शिव जी को आफर करे तो आज बहुत पुण्य मिलता है सभी लोगों को हैप्पी शिवरात्रि Fortunate to be sharing uh, this report of various uh, temples observing Mahashivratri in New York for ITV Gold with uh, camera person Krupa Ranjan Prasad. This is Ashok Vyas. The second annual New Jersey Devil Sikh Heritage Night was organized by the Sikhs of New York at the Prudential Center in Newark on Saturday, February 22nd. This was an exciting evening with Bhangra performances and a musical performance by the famous Nagra group. Here are some highlights of that event. of Sikhism, a great event that truly celebrates Punjabi folk art and dance performances and a day where we would see hundreds of turbans tied to really show unity and solidarity amongst all. Today we are here to celebrate the Sikh American community and all the amazing contributions of them thus far into the American government.
government, into the American culture, into the American society to really normalize the conversation of cultural awareness and integration. So today we are so excited to come here, second year in a row, as one of their main media partners for Sikh Heritage event brought to you by Seva. And we're so excited to show you how the entire community here with all different races from all different ethnicities come together to celebrate unity and to give respect to Sikhism, a beautiful religion with amazing people. Today we'll see members of all age groups and in attendance with support and with so much love and pride, we will today see State Attorney General Gurbir Garival as well as Mayor Habok and Ravi Bhalla, two really pioneers of big people in the Sikh American world. So stay tuned on to ITV Gold as we bring you so much from your voice, our voice on ITV. Do you think it's so important that your dad is doing all this work because when you go to school you can talk about it, right? And actually introduce to your friends that, hey, my dad is in the military and he wears a turban. Um, how do how do they, they react to it? Most of them don't believe me because yeah. they like have heard of him, but like some of them, they're like, oh, he kind of looks similar to you, but like I really don't think he's related. And then when I tell them, they're all in like awe and shock. So like they take that like as inspiring sometimes, like they can like do whatever, like how MLK says. Uh, what have your parents told you about why it's so important to uh, light this turban or wear it? Uh, you know, tell tell uh, the audience there that might be watching. Why do you think turban is important to you? Uh, I think the uh, uh, bugs and uh, patkas are really important because back in the old days, only rajas or kings got to wear these bug bugs. And when uh, like our gurus heard about this, they thought it'd be more fair for all people to wear it so that nobody was higher than the other, just like during Langar. I just want to know uh, what sort of uh, caught your eye here to get your daughter involved in this, because this is so beautiful, because including this for young children and for them to just see this is so important for all of us. I've always admired the Sikh culture, everything I've ever known about it. So, you know, when I saw the opportunity, she's always uh, up for uh, some different culture and she, she wanted to do it. So why not? Thank you so much for your time. And any messages out to the other community on how important it is to just uh, give other cultures uh, a bigger eye or maybe just an, an experience? There are a lot of things out there that you may not know about and you may want to go out and find out a little bit more about some different people and different cultures. Your uh, comment on how important it is to celebrate equality and for have other cultures sort of showcase that. Sure. I mean, the most important thing is just to be knowledgeable about different cultures and to celebrate it, honestly. So I think that's the best part of it. How do you feel about the fact that there are so many individuals here wearing these turbans of different religions, different diverse backgrounds, uh, sort of just highlighting a little bit more on the religion? Yeah, no, absolutely. It's awesome. This is kind of, you know, being at a stadium this large and having so many different people to be a part of it is amazing. In particular, I want to thank the Sick American Veterans Alliance for all the work that they've done to highlight the contribution of Sikh Americans to the U.S. military. That started in 1918 with Bug and Singh Tin, the first turban wearing Sikh American joined the U.S. Army, and it continues to this day to Lieutenant Colonel Kamal Kalsi, who unfortunately could not be here today. But that continued service is something that is part of the Sikh tradition, which drives all of our public service. How are you feeling today that we are here at the New Jersey Devils game? You know, I, I was born and raised in New Jersey, and, and this is actually my first hockey game. And if you asked me as a kid if I'd ever be at a Devils game as the Attorney General and that the Devils would be hosting an event like this to bring awareness to the Sikh community and to the Sikh religion and the contribution of Sikh Americans, I wouldn't believe you. But this is where we are in, in, in 2020, so it's a remarkable time. Uh, to be here and it's a great event. I have to ask you, as a proud Sikh yourself, as a person who represents, you know, the, the Sikh tenets of faith, um, to see hundreds of turbans that will be tied today uh, in the beautiful color of red, it truly symbolizes strength. How does it make you feel as a Sikh? 
I, I think it's incredible that that we are out there promoting awareness of Sikhism by tying turbans uh, on Devils fans so people could experience what the pride we experience in, in wearing our turbans every day and representing our religion so they could experience a piece of that. Uh, and then to tie it into an event like this, it's a great way again to promote understanding and acceptance and uh, inclusivity. Next few months are going to be really heavy on Sikh awareness with Vaisakhi also coming up. I would love for you to give um, a word of encouragement or maybe advice to young Sikh Americans. Uh, you know, they really truly want to enjoy their physical appearances and identities of being a Sikh. You know, I would say that your identity is no barrier to your success. That your identity is not going to limit you from doing anything or accomplish any, accomplishing anything. Uh, when I was a young kid growing up here in New Jersey, we didn't have events like this where we brought awareness to our community, to our religion, to our culture, uh, and it was tough. Uh, but we persevered and we succeeded. Mayor Bala succeeded. I was able to achieve some success. Lieutenant Colonel Kulsi achieved success, all with our identities intact. So they should take some comfort knowing that we're out there trying to promote understanding through our work and through events like this. And then, again, they could accomplish anything they put their minds to and their identity will not inhibit them in any way. to see you again you know you've been such a huge inspiration for a lot of us sick Americans Punjabi Americans and the entire South Asian population how are you feeling today you know being among such an amazing crowd of individuals celebrating something that's so close to your identity well, this is electrifying because it's the New Jersey Devils it's the Sikh community and it's celebrating our heritage as uh, South Asians Punjabis and Sikhs so um, in the context of sports in New Jersey in, and we have a great hobo contingent here so um, it's it's just a great day to have fun and uh, really to educate the general public about who six are six are Americans as well and it's about really showing that we are integrated into the community how important do you think this interaction is with them uh, you know wearing the articles of faith yeah, they, they come to this event every year. They love it. And, um, you know, it, it, it really sends a message that, you know, we are Americans as well. Um, you know, we're, we're six and we're Americans. And those two concepts blend seamlessly together. Um, whether you're, uh, uh, you, you want to be a hockey player, whether you want to be a, a mayor, you know, in America, the sky's the limit for the sick community. And uh, events like this really send that message. You know, we are here talking about the New Jersey Devils. Um, I would love for you to give a message on behalf of, you know, you and the entire Sikh American community for our dear New Jersey Devils. Absolutely. To the Devils, first I want to extend my gratitude as uh, mayor on behalf of the residents of the city of Hoboken. Thank you very much for honoring and respecting the Sikh community for Sikh Heritage Day 2020. And hopefully this, continue, this uh, tradition continues so we can continue to educate and integrate our community into larger society. Follow ITV Girls' Facebook page. Write to us with details of events to events at itvgold.com and subscribe to our YouTube channel to watch our shows at your convenience. It's time now for a short break. We'll be right back after these messages from our sponsors. So don't touch that remote. Welcome back. I'm Kala Shankar. The Center for Community Media at CUNY organized a timely interaction last Thursday on which Dr. Sira Madad, the Senior Director of the System-Wide Special Pathogens Program of New York City, gave a discourse on coronavirus and New York City's Chinese community, disinformation, discrimination, and what to expect. Here are some excerpts from that event. I'm a Rong 
Qing. I'm a reporter for Xinhao Daily. Uh, I'm the moderator for today's panel. And today we talked about the uh, coronavirus epidemic, which scared a lot of people around the world. It seems like uh, we don't have confirmed case in New York City, and the city hospitals are quite prepared. But we don't know what would happen in the future. There could be a bigger outbreak. So everyone needs to embrace um, and to be prepared for uh, a future epidemic. That is obviously ongoing. There's always this, this contagion of misinformation. So from a public health standpoint, we are always battling two outbreaks. First, the actual outbreak of patients getting infected, and then this outbreak of this misinformation being you know, populated by you know, fear mongers and, and whatnot. And it's important to obviously be able to uh, give factual information. So from a census standpoint, it'll give an opportunity for public health officials to perhaps give pamphlets that have factual information of what is actually happening and what they can do about it. So I think from that standpoint, certainly, you know, things to plan for, but we're not there yet. And, you know, we can certainly look and see what needs to be done in that regard. Yeah, I'm Dr. Sarmadad. I'm the Senior Director of New York City Health and Hospital System-wide Special Pathogens Program. And... And we're here today to basically talk about, you know, the coronavirus disease and how not to obviously stigmatize or discriminate against the Asian community. Obviously, there's a lot of interest in this particular topic, given the context of what's happening around the world. There's obviously a coronavirus disease outbreak happening with over, you know, 75,000 cases and counting. But one of the things we want to highlight is obviously not discriminating against any particular community. So in this regard, the Asian community, what we know is that infectious diseases do not respect boundaries. Everybody is susceptible. And so obviously, just making sure that, you know, discrimination is not something that, uh, you know, is, you know, based on science, if you will. Um, so look at facts, look at things that are coming out that are factual, and obviously talk to your healthcare provider if you have additional information or have additional questions. Um, obviously their business has really been suffering, and I'm wondering if you're seeing any more, or if, I feel like it would be very problematic for lots of businesses to somehow mark that their, you know, their, their establishments were safe, but are you seeing more of this? Is there something that we as journalists can help with that and the sort of disinformation around that. So while this may have started in China, that doesn't mean that none of us are, you know, uh, are not susceptible. It can obviously spread to anybody. So, so from that point on, you know, we need to obviously make sure that we are not stigmatizing or marginalizing any one group of people. Because also from a public health standpoint, what this does is that if you're marginalizing and discriminating against a group of individuals, then those individuals are less reluctant to actually seek out health care assistance because of being marginalized. And what that does from a public health standpoint is that then that chain of transmission can continue. That is so important a point. That's why we need your help to get out the message. The best message is from, from you as journalists, uh, independent professional journalism that does the fact checking. Right? The example. You know, you want to encourage transparency. You want to encourage honest reporting. If something, I have a model and, and all my staff knows it like a broken record. If there's bad news, I want to f be first to know about it. But I hate surprises. So if you're honest with me, you gain trust. If I lie to you, then you cannot trust me. It is very unfortunate that this time around, the coronavirus uh, is uh, creating such a negative impact in our community. But there is no case that's been taught test positive in New York City and New York State at this moment. There are zero cases as of today. And the mortality rate at this moment is 2%. So even if you're infected at this moment, 97 other person uh, uh, do not uh, die from it. And so, uh, knock on wood, obviously, we, we held to have it uh, safe. So we are also doing a campaign called Show Love. Uh, here, which is that if you come between now and between Valentine's Day and March 15, uh, any receipt about $10, you can go to our kiosk and redeem for a raffle and you can win an iPhone X, uh, some jewelry and something. But more importantly, I know many of you came down to Chinatown without uh, redeeming the receipt or, 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 uh, uh, or are going to the, the raffles, but we really gratefully appreciate that because I see that this campaign is being copied by other cities, other mayors. San Francisco mayor just showed some love today by going to their local Chinatown store. Uh, Philadelphia mayor went to eat in Chinatown, and our health commissioner came, uh, Dr. Babo, uh, took a team twice to eat in Chinatown. So I encourage people to, uh, uh, you, 
it, you have a higher chance of getting the flu if you don't take the flu shot, uh, keeping wash your hand. But the chance of getting the coronavirus is very, very remote at this moment. Uh, but we should stay vigilant. But at this moment, life goes on. Um, enjoy life. There are a lot of great fun and great food and um, great company to be had in Chinatown. And I hope to, to see you there soon. Thank you very much. Hi, uh, I am Ayako Takada from NHK, which is a Japanese broadcaster. And I wanted to add to this question, uh, this discussion today, that um, we, like, because we look like Chinese people as well, we really feel uh, for them, and I feel uh, we experience the same thing. So we wish that uh, more like accurate uh, information will go around, and we can that all the media, not only ethnic media but uh, major media, are going to talk about this. It is now time for our weekly segment with Padma Shri Dr. Sudhir Park in which he speaks to Ashok Fias about the significance of President Trump's visit to India. Namaskar, uh, welcome to this special edition of This Week with Padma Shri Dr. Sudhir Park and he has been very active and vocal uh, for bringing India and America closer and how he feels about the visit of President of the United States of America uh, this time around. Welcome, Dr. Namaskar. Namaskar. So, very exciting and historical visit? Yes, uh, very much so. Uh, being uh, President <coughs> Trump uh, visiting uh, uh, India uh, at very uh, critical and important time uh, between US-India relation. And uh, it's very welcome move uh, and we thank uh, President uh, Trump for that. And also we thank, thank you, our Prime Minister, uh, hosting the President, Clint, uh, President <laughs> Trump uh, uh, so graciously and so, so um, uh, kind of uh, uh, celebratory way, and and that's a it's a great great uh, it, that shows uh, U.S. India relation is thriving and getting better and better. Mm -hmm. So I I think there is some emotional chord also with you, uh, particularly with this visit because uh, it started. Uh, with Ahmedabad, uh, the place that you come from, yes. and uh, the first uh, stop of uh, President and First Lady of America was Sabarmati Ashram. Uh, how do you feel the significance and symbolic meaning of uh, his uh, visit to Sabarmati Ashram? Well, I think it's very symbolic because uh, uh, Mahatma Gandhi uh, is not only Mahatma for uh, uh, people of India, it's Mahatma for all over the vo whole world. And uh, his teaching of uh, non-violence and non uh, uh, and and non-violence and uh, and uh, uh, non-violent protest against the, any uh, authority or any atrocity or any uh, uh, dictatorship, uh, uh, he is well known. And and uh, uh, today in our USA, in our country in USA, the all the uh, uh, African American. Uh, population got uh, all this freedom and rights because of his teaching, which was adopted by uh, Martin Luther King. Absolutely. So there is a long history of uh, right. the commonly uh, shared values between India and America. And in this context, uh, it and, was… And not only that, but uh, I would like to add one more sentence that uh, in the whole world, the the only person uh, maximum number of uh, statutory uh, uh, is only of Mahatma Gandhi. Uh, it, I mean, there's not a s other single individual who has that many statutory all over the world, whether you go to Europe or you go to America or North America or South America or Africa or India. That shows that uh, his most loved uh, person and most, uh, uh, he was mentor to everyone. So now talking about uh, President Trump's reference to uh counter-terror measures and cooperation between India and America and also having upgraded uh, military of America as well as uh, a reference to uh, working out a deal with India for Indian Air Force helicopters and all that. That's great because I think we need uh, state-of-art uh, uh, defense um, uh, material and um, uh, fighting powers to, to balance out uh, uh, because that's only not only interest of India, but also is the interest of USA to balance uh, in South Asia, uh, South Asia to balance the Pakistan and, and China uh, against uh, uh, democratic forces. 
No, Dr. Sahib, staying uh, with uh, the stadium uh, for a little while, uh, overall, some uh, of the impression or the impact of President's speech as well as uh, the follow-up uh, comments by Prime Minister, how uh, do you feel uh, is the take-home message for people? Well, take-home message is that uh, U.S. Uh, and India, they are really uh, genuinely close friends. And they, because of uh, largest democracy and oldest democracy, and their uh, main power, human power, uh, I mean, uh, 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 main power of the India, and uh, large population of the India, educated population of the India, and uh, uh, wealthiness of the America, that, com that combination is a very deadly combination to do any good thing in the world. And I think uh, they can take uh, terror terrorist. Uh, um, um, they can take care, handle the terrorists. They can handle the, any calamity. They can handle any uh, un un unwanted um, uh, forces in the world. Mm. And I think uh, some uh, uh, statements to that effect were also made by President, uh, and he, in his statement during the joint press conference, <coughs> also said that. Uh, he is uh, confident by what he heard from Prime Minister Modi. So let us stay a little bit with the official side of President Trump's visit and then briefly we will touch what happened in Delhi uh, parallel to this. Uh, so there were uh, important memorandum of understanding signed and two of them are directly of your interest, you coming uh, from the medical fraternity. So one is about uh, the cooperation um, with respect to mental health. Yes. Uh, wh what do you think uh, is the seed for this uh, sort of uh, memorandum? Well, mental health is a very burning issue, uh, both in, uh, not only in uh, USA, uh, but also in India too. And there is a rampant, rampant misuse or abuse of uh, drugs, particularly the opioid nowadays, uh, in both in both the countries, uh, and and uh, plus in even in the Pakistan, who who is the largest exporter of this uh, opioid drugs to the India, and that affects our Indian population, uh, in Indian young population particularly, and and therefore and and that creates lot of uh, issues about mental health. And joining hands with the USA, uh, with the, their state of art uh, uh, medical uh, uh, medical field, medical field and medical know-how, India can gain a lot of uh, good thing to control uh, the mental health problem in India. Mm. Looking at the time concerning Dr. Uh, on the one hand, while we are hopeful that Indo-US relationship is so high, at the same time, parallel to what was happening. Uh, with uh, President Trump's presence in Delhi, there were communal riots of the kind that we have not seen in decades. So, how confident you are that Indian government would be able to take care of uh, this? And unfortunately, we lost 13 innocent lives. I think uh, I have full confidence in uh, Prime Minister uh, Modi's uh, government and administration and uh, Honorable Amit Shah's administration that they will uh, um, definitely resolve this uh, whatever uh, 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 so-called uh, 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 un unrest is going on uh, uh, and I'm sure they will control it because I think the uh, uh, people needs education, pe people need uh, more of, um, uh, should know what is good for them and I'm sure government is very proactive to educate them that uh, CA is how good for for everyone, and there is nothing wrong about it. There is no, there is there is no religious bias there, or there is nothing there. So uh, once uh, um, uh, people will understand, automatically everything should die down, and and India should prosper further. Mm. So they say that hope springs eternal, and uh, I always see. Uh, Padmushi, Dr. Suvir Parikh as a person who is full of hope and uh, has faith in the goodness of the outcome of everything. So, uh, your concluding remarks? Well, uh, I would like to thank you both uh, our Prime Minister uh, Narendra Bhai Modi as well as President Donald Trump to bring the largest and oldest democracy together and uh, uh, pledge to work together and make the world 
better place to live. Thank you. We'll see you next week. Uh, please join us uh, next time. Jai Hind, Jai Bharat, God bless America. With that, we come to the end of our program. Thanks for watching Vision of Asia, Voice of the Community. Looking forward to joining you again next Sunday at the same time, right here on ITV Gold. Write to us with details of events to events at itvgold.com. Do follow ITV Gold's Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Kala Shankar. Until we meet again, have a pleasant week ahead. Namaste.